How's it going everybody? My name is Henry and in this video we're going to go over uh, my three stages when it comes to selling fitness. Now we're just going to overview each process. We're not going to really dive in too deep in each one. I'm going to do follow up videos, you know, really focusing in on each aspect. But these are the three things that I think are important when you're trying to um, sell fitness, uh, especially personal training and things like that. So just to kind of outline the three phases, the first one is the learning phase. So the learning phase is basically when you're learning about the prospect, when you're talking, you're finding information about what they want to do. And the importance of this is so you know what product is best to offer them. Um, the next stage is the sales process. So this is when you're presenting um, what it is that you feel like is going to be a good fit for them to help them on their fitness goals. And then there's the close um, where you're closing on that and completing the sale. So um, I've been in the industry for about five years and um, I came up to the sell side and I've seen anywhere from people that are really good at certain phases um, but most of the time people really just focus on the close and um, that we get new members but um, they're not really getting involved in programs which um, you know the programs generally cost more money and that's why um, because if you don't spend a lot of time with somebody you know it's hard to get them to spend the extra money to get on a program that could help them better so the purpose of this video is to help you if you're you know new to fitness sales or been in it for a while and just kind of want to outline of what you can do to get better um, so just kind of a quick overview some best practices for presenting fitness so um, some of these acronyms and tours and stuff like that you know may not um, be accurate to your gym, but um, I'll kind of generalize it so it makes sense to you. So um, every tour gets a fitness recommendation and we call it a fitness profile, but it's a follow up with a personal trainer after they join. All right, so we want the mindset to be that um, going into a tour or when you're presenting somebody that you're going to present fitness. So that's why it's just it's going to happen. You don't want to judge a book by its cover when it comes in. So that's the mindset you want to have. Like this is going to be presented. Um, so we call our salespeople membership advisors, but they could be called fitness consultants, sales, you know, person, you know, they all have different names. Um, and that the acronyms there are just fitness manager, assistant fitness manager, or personal trainer. Um, you want to at least introduce them to it. The personal trainer might do the actual fitness uh, presentation or recommendation but um, if not you want to at least have them meet so it kind of makes it a little bit more tangible um, that's usually the issue most people have when it comes to fitness is that it's not tangible right you're, you're paying a lot of money for something that you don't immediately get when you go to like an Apple store and you buy an iPhone you get the iPhone right then and you spent seven hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars you get your phone when you buy personal training you're gonna spend that or more and you don't get anything right then so having a way to make it more tangible helps a lot um, you want to build the value in the personal training. Um, now, our gym does have small group training, um, which we call that studio. We have boot camp classes. We have group fitness classes. Um, but we want to build the value in the one-on-one -on -one and then have the studio and all that stuff be you know, built into the program. So that way you can start with the optimal um, presentation for somebody and then if they can't afford that it gives you options that still have value to drop down so you don't have to go all the way down to just the basic membership um, the recommendation is going to be tailored to the goals so you don't want to just always present the most expensive thing if it's really not going to fit their goals um, you want to be especially in fitness I think most people are in fitness because they want to help people um, just selling the most expensive package may not necessarily help them so you want to you know be genuine and honest in your presentation and make sure that it will meet their goal and not um, lie if they want to lose a hundred pounds and you know three months don't tell them that your program will have them do that um, be honest with it um, everything's going to be, you know, lined up for them. If they don't meet the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, criteria financially, that's how you build down. And so you want to present with a timeline. You know, I ideally like to have a start and a finish. You can set it up for, and then you go on to another program. But um, for me, I always like to have a start and finish and an end goal. Um, so that way when I'm bundling this to sell it to them, it all makes sense. So that's just kind of some best practices that I think could be very helpful. Um, and again, we'll go into more details in later videos on like what's important for those things. So the first stage is the learning stage. So um, if you're familiar with fitness, you know that when you work with a personal trainer, they're going to do what's called a PARQ, which is a physical activity readiness questionnaire. And the point of that is to make sure that everything they're going to do with the client is safe, um, that there's nothing that you wouldn't know that might injure them, but also um, it's to give you some ammunition on why they need to do your program. So if you um, are telling them that they need to do this program, training with you two or three times a week, and then 
they you know kind of rebuttal a little bit you can go back to the park queue and say okay well you have this injury you know you want to lose this much weight like this program is going to do it i think this is the way to go um so for me as um, a salesperson i'm not necessarily needing a park queue because i'm not going to be training you but i do need a questionnaire you know to really just get to know you learn you and um you know see what program is going to work best for you. So these are some questions that I use. Um, definitely I'll make another video going to each one specifically, but just to overview, um, the first one I like to ask is what made you decide to come in today? Um, I like to use urgency when it comes to fitness. It's pretty emotional buy. Um, so the reason they came in today, sometimes it's random, but a lot of times there was something that happened in their life that made them decide to come in to join a gym. You know, not everybody is just a fitness enthusiast that just, you know, joins a gym right when they move everywhere. A lot of times people, it's the last thing on their mind. It's something that they think, oh, I need to go do this. And then something happens, maybe a pair of pants doesn't fit anymore or um, a relationship change, um, job status change, or something, you know, that affects them greatly happened. And that's what, again, so you want to know that because you want to be able to, you know, really dig into that emotion um, to help them do their fitness plan. Next is what is your 12-week goal? I like to present in terms of 12 weeks. So whatever you like to do, you know, you just gear that question towards that. Um, have you followed a fitness pro program before? So there's a couple of reasons I ask this. One, if they have no idea what a program consists of, I don't want to be overbearing in the information. I want to kind of be gentle with how I um, lay things out. But two, if they're like, yeah, you know, I did an Herbalife plan, you know, whatever, I bought this stuff, it lets me know how much they've spent before on their fitness. So it kind of gives me a gauge of where they're going to be comfortable with. Um, and then, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how motivated are you to meet your fitness goals? So they may have told you some fitness goals, and then you ask them how motivated they are, and they might say 3. Um, then you're going to want to follow back up with, okay, well, what would make that 10? And they might give you some more, you know, ammunition, more uh, feedback into their goals. But if they're, oh, I'm at a 10, then that's pretty good, and you want to keep moving on. So that's just kind of a feeler question to know if you have the right pain point for them. Um you know how will it feel when you how will it make you feel when you reach your goal so that's a good question because it starts pulling those emotions so if it's like you know some clothes aren't fitting it'd be like oh man i could go back into my old wardrobe or um, i'm getting in shape for a high school reunion or a wedding and it would feel really good to look good for that you know you want to have that emotion because when it comes time to close you can go back to that and they're like, well, you know, I want to think about it. They're like, well, look, you've got this wedding coming up. You know, we need to make this happen today. Let's just go ahead and do it. So you want to have this ammunition up front because once you start closing, you don't want to have to go back into a learning stage if you, if you don't have to. Um, have you ever been in the shape before? So this kind of is just more of a feeler question so you know what kind of thing to present them. And do you have any limitations or injuries? So that's a good question because you don't want to go through a whole presentation and then they say, oh, you know, I have a damaged hip. I can't do this kind of workout. You want to know that from the get-go so you can prescribe um, correctly. And two, that's something that can be built in the presentation that they can work on. So if they're like, yeah, you know, I hurt my back, then you might have a trainer that specializes in um, – you know, back recovery or back pain relief or things like that. So you can build it in your program. So that's the learning stage. Um, we're going to move on from there, but it's really just meant to um, get your ammunition for when you go to close and provide a solid recommendation for them that they need. So the sale. So this is just a overview of what I pitch. You know, I generally draw this out when I'm working with them. I want it to feel really custom, um, and it is custom in some ways of the way I'm presenting it, but um, I want them to see something that makes it real, like, oh, these are the stages. I don't like having necessarily just a laminated pamphlet that's, you know, really fresh and, you know, professional looking because then it looks kind of cookie cutter, and um, I want it to feel like this is designed specifically for their issues that they're working with and in my opinion it should be um, because it is about them so in this one the person's goal was to drop 20 pounds so i write that on the top um, they want to do it in 12 weeks so i write that at the top if there was more information about their goal i would put it up on there but uh, this one's pretty simple um, i usually break it up in the 
three phases. Um, basically, I'm not going to give them a day-to-day -day what they're going to be doing with their trainer because when they get with the trainer, the trainer is going to be actively adjusting and changing what that's going to be. And for me to just prescribe that from just meeting somebody, it's not going to be accurate and um, it'd be too much information anyway. So I generally start where the 3D scan is. That's where we do our fitness profile. We do a bio scan where it shows their body type, their um, body fat, all that stuff. But you could do that with a, you know, doing a body fat test, pinch test, um, measuring them, you know, whatever you do in that time frame. So they're going to meet and, you know, make kind of their next few weeks plan from there. I usually say about 30 days, but it's different depending on the program. Um, I usually call that stage the core phase. For most people, that just helps them understand that it's building the foundation. It's the beginning of the workout. They're learning how to do things. Then we do a re-evaluation re in 30 days, make our changes. Then we go into the power phase. Um, then we do another 3D scan, follow up, and, and so forth. So we're just making our way through, um, always progressing so they don't feel like they're going to plateau. But also it feels like, man, when I get in this second phase and stuff, I'm going to be doing stuff that I'm not um, knowledgeable about right now. So it really builds value in what that trainer is going to offer. Um, I usually recommend three times a week. Most people come out of the gate and say they're going to do like six times a week or something, you know, crazy. And for someone that hasn't worked out at all to come in and do five times a week, that's just, you know, not going to happen and it's not going to go longer that. So I'll p tell them three times a week if they do anything more than that, it's just going to help them achieve their goals, but they need to follow the personal trainer's guidance on what they should be doing. So I'll pitch it three times a week over 12 weeks, it makes 36 total workouts, um, each workout is about an hour, so I'm looking for a commitment of about 36 hours. Um, they say you can lose about two pounds a week over 12 weeks, so you can lose about 24 pounds of body fat in that time. So 36 hours, you can lose about 24 pounds of body fat. That makes it seem tangible. It lets them know how much work is really gonna take place, um, but also it just, it's not as scary when you're saying it's going to take 90 days or 12 weeks. That's a long time. But when you're talking about 36 hours, most people work more than that in a week. And they really start clicking like, okay, this is what I'm paying the professional for. So that way I can get my results in a short period of time and go about my life. Um, now, granted, they're going to have to follow the nutrition information. They can't just come do the workouts and stuff. But um, that's built into it. And, you know, if you've been in fitness for a while, you know the nutritional side is certainly much more difficult than the exercise side. Um, so this kind of outlines it, makes it tangible, and um, that's essentially the sale. And everyone's going to be custom. I'll do some more custom videos on that. But for this example, get your sale. It should meet the criteria of what you got in the learning stage. From there, you go into the close. Now, the close stage is basically you've agreed upon the goal. So if you go back to the sale, usually when I say this, 36 hours can lose 24 pounds. However I'm saying it, I'm saying, you know, is this what you would like to do? If they say yes, then I'll move to the close. If they say no, I need to figure out why before I go for the close. So if they say, yes, absolutely, that sounds great, you know, and I'm like, perfect, all right, and here's how you can get started, I'll go for the close. If they say no, I'll ask them why, and say, well, you know, I can't go three times a week, actually. And so that's when we go back to the notes we took in the learning phase. It's like, okay, well, you said you could. What changed in the, you know, past 10 minutes? And then a lot of times they're just scared to commit to this. And so you can even set them up with that and say, you know, a lot of times people say this isn't going to work once I draw the whole thing out um, because it can be a bit intimidating to commit to making this much change. Is that the case here? And if it is the case, they'll agree with you and you can kind of massage them through that and go forward. But um, once they agree upon whatever you presented here, then you go to the close. If they say, oh, how much is it? Say, don't worry about the price. I just want to make sure that, you know, before I do that, you know, we have lots of options on how we can get started on this. I just want to make sure that this is the right goal and you can, you can see yourself doing it this way. Once they say yes, then you move on. You wouldn't want to sell someone a car they didn't tell you they didn't like yet. Um, so from here, they've agreed upon it. You're just going to essentially go, okay, great. Your program is X. How would you like to pay for it? And just, you know, that's a close. There's 100,000 different closes you can use. I'm not going to go into all the different closes in this video. But those are my three phases in how to sell personal training. So I'm going to try to make more videos of this and, you know, help people. Um, you know, sales is a very complex industry. There's so many different, you know, there's medical sales, car sales, there's newspaper sales, advertising, you know, 
um, fitness. And I'm going to try to specialize in fitness. Of course, a lot of this stuff translates, you know, other ways, but I'm passionate about fitness. I've sold other things and it's left to me, you know, not always enjoying the sales process, but I've never felt bad selling fitness. Um, I work for a really good company that, you know, supports us in our sales process that um, allows us to promise a lot and deliver a lot. And um, if we ever have issues, they really work with us in making sure the customer is happy. Um, so I feel really good about using these skills and these talents to help people change their lives and you should too. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have questions, you know, put them in the comments section below on certain things and I'll try to get some more videos out quickly. Um, this is a presentation I did to um, the market that I'm in, to some of our salespeople and had great response and um, people took some of the stuff and put it immediately action. Now we real role played and spent about a couple hours on it. Um, but um, we'll make more videos for that. So anyway, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.